but she literally swore under congressional oath when she was asked, how did you break away from the clutches of what she described as, as the devil of communism? And she said, only through faith, only through my church. That was the only way out. It's quite the story for sure. Go ahead, Father Carney. Hey, I'd like to add to that. You know, Paul, I just love your book. And, and Julia, I need to get your book, too. So her book is great, by the way. And I'm sorry I haven't read yours. I, I got yeah. I got to get yours. It, it's well, you included the Ten Commandments of the Communists. And yeah, I was an talking to another priest. And I said, look at this, Father. Number one and number three. Here's number one. Never forget that the clergy is the most powerful enemy of the communist state. Fulton Sheen proved that. And number three, convince your friends not to have any contact with priests. You see, the devil, hell, the revolution, they're scared of us. They're scared of God. They're scared of priests. If, if we don't let the propaganda of these revolutionary men get in between our ears, because there's a battle going on inside here for all of us in the world. If we don't let that get to us and we see, oh, wait, let's get, go back to faith and see how valuable our priests are, we're going to win. And St. John Marie Vianney told us, if you knew how valuable, important the priest was, you would weep with joy. So these are things that I'm so glad you guys are exposing the propaganda. And I think my job is to, to be like, St. Bernard of Clair or St. Bernard of Clairvaux, who he preached the crusade to save the Holy Lamb. Well, I'm trying to preach a crusade to uh, preserve the holy name of God, because that's how we change everything. So. And I was going to ask, and I think you just alluded to it, Father Carney, what we can do, what all of us can do now, practically especially as Catholics, it sounds to me like you would suggest make sure that you talk to your priests and <laughs> hold them in high esteem. And uh, is that the, the first piece of advice you would give? Yeah, I would say get close to the Catholic faith. Uh, really look into the traditional Latin mass, which I say every day. I love it. And I would also say enroll in the Arch Confraternity, the Holy Face, and join the ranks with St. Therese of Lisieux. She's such a popular saint. She's a missionary, but she never left the, the convent. She died at a young age, and she was one of the first members to enroll in the Arch Confraternity of Holy Face in 1885 when it was first established by Pope Leo XIII. So I think this is, is, is a way to get involved because when we enroll into a confraternity like the Rosary or the Holy Face, there's spiritual graces that we share with the people in there. So to be involved with her mom and dad, um, the Martins who are saints, that's a great clout of people to join ranks with, to fight against the enemy. And in the Old Testament and in Ezekiel, we have to have hope and faith and, and, and joy about the future because God's got this taken care of. It's just contingent on us. When there's only a few good people, that are really trying to stand up for God's rights and to be just for their neighbor. It only takes a few good people to, to combat a large mass of evil people. So it's an exponential gain when we gain a few people into the ranks of the Arch Confraternity of the Holy Faith. So that's what I, I really want people to, to get from this hour is to think about the Arch Confraternity of the Holy Faith. If you haven't ever prayed the rosary, our Lady of Fatima tells us that this needs to be prayed for poor sinners because people are falling into hell like snowflakes. And Sister Mary St. Peter, who was the chief one to receive the revelations of the holy face, she also was told by Jesus, so many people are falling into hell and we need people to get on their knees. So as Bella Dodd, Paul told us, she started to weep. Because her soul was yearning. It was so dry for the grace of God. And it came through the priesthood. And that's how Jesus gives us the body of Christ is through the priesthood. And the communist propagation machine, they're so good at making us hate ourselves. They're so good at making priests look like we are horrible people. And there's a few of us that are. That's so true. But the majority of us are giving our lives most of us don't get married in the Latin rite, and 
we are dedicated to be a bridge for people to walk on our backs. Like when we're ordained, we lay down on the cathedral's floor in the sanctuary, and that makes like a bridge for people to walk from the sanctuary towards tabernacle, which is the east, which is the figurative gate of heaven. We certainly owe you a, a large debt of gratitude for sure. Julia, can you give us some practical advice about what you think we should do to push back against communism today? Yeah, I think it's interesting and important that communism and the conscience of the West by Fulton Sheen, um, in the latter part, he talks about Fatima and he doesn't, as far as I remember, he doesn't specifically talk about the first Saturday's devotion, but you know, it's part of the message of Fatima. And he basically stresses that, you know, we know how the story ends. We know that um, Fat the story of Fatima reminds us that we live in a moral universe and that there will be a triumph of good over evil. But I think it's important for us to remember that Our, Our Lady specified that um, we have a part to play in this. And I think the first Saturday's devotion is just something that we we can do. You know, we can make the decision to do it. I can't make the decision about, you know, anything related to whether the consecration of Russia has happened and whether there needs to be a new one or anything related to that. I can't. I don't have the power to, to really address that issue, but I do have the power to get up and go to church on the first Saturday and pray the rosary, do some mental um, prayer meditation and go to confession. And I think that, and receive Holy Communion at mass. So I, I love the first Saturday's devotion. I what I recommend to people is, you know, do it once and then keep doing it as, as often as you can. If you can do like a perpetual first Saturday's devotion, I think we'll get many, many graces for ourselves and for our world as well. Paul, any advice from you for Catholics people today to, to do their part to, to fight communism? Well, I would quote um, probably three of the favorite words of Pope John Paul II, be not afraid. And, you know, he took a bullet on the feast day of Our Lady of Fatima, May 13th, 1981, from a shooter named Ahmed Ali Asha, who was working for the Bulgarians under orders from the Soviet GRU with the green light of Yuri Andropov and the KGB. They, you know, the communists actually tried to kill the Pope. They actually tried to murder the Pope. And he would, he would go there to the people of Poland when they were surrounded by the communist secret police and people were chanting we want god we want god he told them be not afraid and that was certainly the motto effectively that bella dodd pursued as well you know, she became this courageous witness who was smeared you know called anti-semitic um a racist <laughs> every 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 phrase that they could come up with they would have called her a homophobe if they had the word back then right um every every word in the playbook but but she pushed forward to fight against evil, an ideology that she considered like her church eventually, literally from the devil, and uh, and fought on behalf of truth and good. So be not afraid. 